Welcome Batch and today we will discuss short texts, books, readers, and dictionaries. Short texts are a very good source for intermediates while learning vocabulary. Short stories or texts give a small amount of reading and several words they can look up to discover. Again, make the reader or assignment as simple as the ability of the class. Most newspaper articles are written around the 8th grade level in the United States. Newspaper articles are also good sources to help build vocabulary and themed words. Take for instance a story about Halloween in the United States. A Halloween to remember. This past Monday was Halloween, and children all over town will remember it for the rest of their lives. The October festival was as bright as the orange and red leaves. Many children dressed up in their Halloween costumes and paraded around town behind a big red fire truck. After the parade, the children went to the park and watched Halloween movies including The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. After they watched the movie, the children played games such as apple bobbling, pin the tail on the donkey, and egg races. There even was a Jack O. Lantern contest. After the party, the children were entered into a costume contest. A scary ghost won the competition, followed by a boxer and nurse. When the children were done with the party, they went out trick or treating for candy in the neighborhood. It was fun for all ages. The bold print are new words that can be talked about and explained to the students so they can learn new vocabulary. In this instance, Halloween is a holiday in October. The other words can teach about Halloween. Parade is a word describing people walking around town and people watch them and contest is a competition like a game. Jack O. Lanterns are pumpkins with a face carved in them with a candle inside. While trick or treating is when children go outside and ask for candy from people's houses. Many short stories are available on the internet. Two of the best writers to use is Rudyard Kipling, The Jungle Book, an English writer who lived in India and Francis Hodgson Burnett. These stories should only be given to advanced readers, as the words in the stories can be quite difficult sometimes. When considering a short story you need to read the story first to ensure it isn't higher than the student's ability. You don't want to give them a story to read or they have to look up 90% of the words. Then you have to take into account gender and cultural interests. Many people like to read about something they can relate to. Girls will like to read about girls, while boys will like to read about boys. Children will like to read about children, etc. You don't want to give a story about a New York child going to the Museum of Modern Art to a group of children who have never watched television. The short stories will add many new words to the student's vocabulary while at the same time increasing their thirst to read. While they read they not only learn new words but also become better in vocabulary. The student's spelling and writing will actually become better. One would be surprised to discover that the way a student speaks is the way a student will write. This is because writing uses the vocabulary a student knows. They only understand their own grammar rules and style of talking. Dictionaries Years ago, dictionaries were discouraged in the classroom and some TESOL courses encouraged teachers not to allow students to use dictionaries during reading exercises. Some teachers still do not allow dictionaries in the classroom. The reason is because they want the students to try to find root words and word groups by guessing. Dictionaries are a good source of vocabulary if you give tests on new vocabulary, however, to learn words from a dictionary the student must open the dictionary and decide which word he or she wants to learn. Reading and then having to discover a word on their own is hard enough. To give a list of words at the beginning of the week and to have the learner open a dictionary is better as the learner now has to discover what a word means without being self-motivated. Many dictionaries used in foreign nations are either bilingual, two languages, or plain English text. Many bilingual dictionaries only describe one meaning of a word. The student can only pick the meaning that is described in their dictionary and sometimes it may be wrong meaning. In most cases students now can buy dictionaries in both their native tongue and English. This is helpful when the student is looking for a word to describe the word and it uses the English meaning. The learner can get the meaning in their native tongue to prevent a miscommunication that is written after the English meaning. Likewise, a student who needs to find a word in English and cannot find the right word can look up a word in his or her own language. Many new students prefer this type of dictionary.
Many new dictionaries in bilingual form only use words and explanations that are commonly used in ESL courses. One theory is that students should use dictionaries after they have finished reading their text to look up the words they didn't understand and then reread what they have read if they have not fully understood what was written or read. The other theory is that students should use the dictionary as they do the reading and find the meaning behind the words. When they are done with the reading they then have to go back and read the reading over to understand. If not they only translated the reading and didn't truly read it. With the use of a dictionary and thesaurus the potential for a student to learn English and vocabulary is unstoppable. Test Your English Vocabulary in Use uses the following methods to teach vocabulary. The students are initiated into a slew of various ways of teaching. Some of the examples. A two-list word list, one list having one set of words and the other list having one word with similar or opposite meanings. The students now have to match up the two words. Students may or may not be able to use the dictionary if the teacher chooses to allow so. In this example, the students must match the two words that mean the opposite. Fast dense. Liquid slow. Fast would match with slow and liquid would match with dense. The students have to fill out a spidergram. This will show derived of words. Noun action verb. Writer writing write. Runner running run. In this example the teacher can leave one word out in each section and the students would have to write in the missing word. Dancer dance. In this previous example the students would have to write the word dancing. Students can also pick the odd one out to help them learn their vocabulary. Apple orange potato banana. Baseball pie football rugby. In the previous example the first line the potato would be the odd word out as it's a vegetable. In the second example the word pie would be taken out because it's a food and not a sport. You can give a list of words and students can put them into lists of they are negative or positive words. Happy sad. Juvenile juvenile. Test your English vocabulary in use is the best series you can acquire in order to teach vocabulary to learners. You can give tests to students with an open dictionary test. The students would be given a sentence to read. You can also give readers to students and have them find key words that are associated with main topic of the text or find comparative adjectives in the text. By doing this they will remember vocabulary and recall words that were previously learned in past lessons. Some helpful drills or handouts may be Jumble words with mixed letters where the student needs to unscramble the letters to find the word they are looking for. Word searches are a great way to have the students search for words in a grid of letters. The students can use themed searches or ones that are more complicated. Selecting may be more complex than identification tasks, since they involve both recognizing words and making choices amongst them. Matching game is a game where two sets of words are given to the student and the student has to match one word from each set of lists. There are three varieties of this game. One variety of this game would have the lists in two separate columns as such. A, B. Drink food. The student would have to, in the example, find the common theme from one word in column A to column B. Give the students a group of words and the students will have to match that word with one of the previous lists. Palmanism, which is described below in the chapter, entitled Games. The students flip over cards and try to match two cards with a common theme. Sorting activity games takes numerous words on cards and then has the students separate them and placing them into common groups. The students should also name the groups. An activity would go like this. Separate the following words. Bird orange apple dog shirt. Dress monkey shoes hamburger giraffe. Once the words have been separated, the students have to find common themes for each group that in this case would be animals, food, and clothing. Ranking and sequencing is a type of exercise the students must organize words due to their necessity, priority, or importance. Such practice could be like this. The student is moving across town and has 16 items but can only take 4 per trip when he or she moves. They can only move once a week and therefore have to take 4 trips to move their items. Which items are they going to take each trip? The students make three lists and then when they are finished compares the answers with other classmates. They would then have to explain why they moved the items as they did. 
refrigerator television dresser bed. Stove pots and pans close ironing board slash iron. Other topics in this past exercise could include the important things in life, the student lists 16 things people do in their life and put in order what things are important. Well, that is all the time we have for today. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.